Welcome to Beyond BIM. These are certainly unprecedented times for all of us. And again, we hope that you all continue to stay safe and most importantly, at home. So today we hope to give you a little bit of a distraction during these difficult times to help pass the time. It is not often that we get to change our mindsets or thinking models, yet this is precisely what our guest speaker today has helped us rediscover new ways of thinking and challenging our perspectives. Today's episode is a guest interview with Dr. Gerder Bro. She is a researcher that cares about the future and the world and its nature. She is a computer scientist with a PhD in mechatronics, which says to us just how much she loves to talk about the future and emerging technologies. She also labels herself as a data person, one that always finds a way to talk about how important it is to know your data. And in this episode, we will discuss cyber physical systems and data in construction management and the future of these practices. In addition to discussion about technologies, she has also helped capture new ways of thinking and reminds us just how important shifting a mindset is when trying to achieve that change. Our guest speaker, Dr. Didem, does highly interdisciplinary research which intersects between data and cyber physical systems. She is a researcher for smart infrastructure and construction at the Langer Work Center for Construction Engineering and Technology with the University of Cambridge. This research is supported as part of the Center for Digital Built Britain's work within the Construction Innovation Hub. And now let's take a look at what DDEM has to say on cyber physical systems and shifting mindsets in the built environment. Um, so I am a computer scientist and uh, for my master's degree I looked at low power computer architectures specifically in the arithmetic logic unit so that was part of a sustainable environment and energy systems master program and it was first time that I worked in a multidisciplinary research environment. I just um, loved that experience and uh, since I have always been interested in robots and worked on robotics projects, I was looking to develop my future career towards that direction. Uh, yes, that was the reason that I chose to do my PhD in mechatronics. So um, I, I had this education in Stockholm, Sweden, at the Royal Institute of Technology. And I had the chance to work with big European efforts in collaboration with several industrial companies from telecommunications, automotive, and manufacturing industries. The projects that I have been involved was on collaborative robots, intelligent and autonomous systems, and similar cyber physical systems, basically. Um, my research focuses on using data and visual analytics for improving three challenges, um, complexity, interoperability, and sustainability related with cyber physical systems. Um, and today I work at the Center for Smart Infrastructure and Construction and Liner Rock Center for Construction Engineering and Technology at the University of Cambridge might continue to work on similar topics in the construction industry in addition to the earlier industries that I have been part of. Okay, and uh, given your experience in cyber physical systems and your current work, how do you foresee it transforming construction and the wilder, wild, wider built environment industry as a whole? Um, cyber physical systems, as you would know, is the product of the fourth industrial revolution, or sometimes we call it Industry 4.0. Um, this is a new era because 
we do not only use software and algorithms to run these systems, we also have networking capabilities. This allows us to share data, build knowledge, and even learn through different feedback loops. Um, then we can even update our software according to what we have learned and improve these systems even further. This is a wonderful opportunity. Um, different industries certainly are adopting these new systems at different levels and different speeds. For the construction, we can surely talk about using robots, drones, or similar machines to improve the overall performance, output, sustainability, or competitiveness of this, the whole industry. Um, but we can also talk about the end product, the, the built environment itself as a cyber physical systems, which can really benefit society on a larger scale. Um, these systems are promising to provide solutions to coping with aging population, addressing climate change, improving issues related with health, public safety and mobility. So they are really uh, promising um, systems that can make our world a better place if we manage to use them in the right way, in the right time. Okay, uh, this is another question that uh, may be a little bit an extra one or an off-topic one, but can you actually mm -hmm. explain what are the origins of cyber-physical systems? Where do they come from? Yes, um, so cyber-physical systems term is uh, actually coming from from USA, basically. Um, earlier, it was called embedded systems or system of systems, um, sometimes mechatronic systems also. Uh, basically, what it means is that uh, computations and physical processes affect each other. Um, and this is a, a new ability that we can see exist in an existing systems. Before we were either using mechanical systems, driving it with electronics, then we added software on top of that. Now, on top of all these, we are adding a networking capability. So we connect systems with each other also. Um, Internet of Things is also very similar terminology that are um, used many times. Um, collaborative robots, smart cities, autonomous vehicles are just examples of this kind of systems, basically. Okay, thanks for that. And then, so bearing in mind with the current status uh, in construction, what do you see are the current challenges or barriers that our industry needs to overcome before cyber physical systems become a reality? Or have mm -hmm. they already become part of a reality? Um, yes, I, actually, this is a very good question, Erika. But since I am looking at these systems from the data perspective, the first things comes to my mind is primarily about the data dimension. So I will try to give a few examples on that because I think that um, without data, these systems are not in, in a full realization. Um, and it requires, or using the data requires our whole industry to think differently. So I know that the benefits of collecting and using data is obvious, but the motivation, I see that it is not there yet. This is one of the main challenges or barriers, I think. So not being able to uh, fully use the opportunities that data brings leads us to some uh, issues related with the data. So for instance, um, availability of data is a challenge, which I talk a lot about that. Um, what does this mean? Availability of data means that we have the data. The data is available for us to work on it. Um, 
The problems that I personally was interested with my research, such as interoperability, sustainability, complexity, requires us to have different data sets from different stakeholders, different vendors, about different processes. So it is highly heterogeneous data. Um, generally, we don't have this data available for us. So it requires us to think, plan, put mechanisms in place to collect this data. Um, the other issue that I talk a lot is about accessibility of the data. As we said, this is heterogeneous. It sits in different repositories in control of different stakeholders. We need to find a way to share and make our data accessible. Um, the volume of the data is another challenge. Sometimes we, we hear that big data and we think that, oh, having a huge amount of data would help us. But actually, some of our um, questions can be even benefit from minimalistic data sets. So huge amount of data is not always meaning that we will get most out of it. And uh, today we talk a lot about artificial intelligence. However, we don't have the quality assessment mechanisms in place. So we don't trust that our data is in high quality. That makes me to think about if we don't know if the quality of our data, then how we can trust the automated decision making through these uh, artificial intelligence solutions. And in addition to these data-related challenges, I also think that the common understanding of these systems um, and how they could really benefit the daily life of the workforce, organizations, society, is not understood well. So there is a learning curve. It requires new skills, um, additional investments from time wise and resource wise is needed. And without this long term understanding with clear motivation, this transformation looks like that it will take some time to happen. And are these motivations uh, from what you've seen in different industries, are they more or less the same or are they unique and specific to each industry? Or are there kind of unifying motivations to be using data? Um, I think the, the motivations are more or less similar towards these uh, overall goals to benefit more, in, to improve the integration, to learn a lot from the data and gather some insights. These are more or less same. However, I think the maturity of using the data differs from different industries. For example, we, we have a, a very good examples of uh, technology giants that they are using data where, and operationalizing it in a very good performance. However, we also have different industries like manufacturing, government, construction, um, telecommunication. They have their own pace of speed, let's say. Some of them are falling a little bit behind, taking it slower, where some of them are doing it faster. Okay. And uh, if we take a, a look at the future, as an expert looking at the future and projecting into what the future might hold, are you able to elaborate more about what the future of cyber physical systems will evolve to? And then in relation to that also, how it will push us particularly in construction, beyond using BIM only? Mm. You know, uh, I love talking about future and doing research on that, and I can easily get excited about this. Um, I think I can explain this maybe with an example. Henry Ford once um, said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. I think this is a very nice quote to remember about the unknown unknowns. When we don't know things, basically, we don't know what we don't know. 
So for that reason, I always uh, encourage people to think without focusing on the solutions, but trying to understand problems instead. Um, when we look at the evolution of cars, for example, we can easily see that we didn't know um, many things, and this affected the whole world, actually. 100 and 120 years ago, we were wishing for faster horses. Today, we talk about autonomous cars as a mobility service, which hopefully will improve the utilization of personal cars, allow us to work, read, study while we are driving from A to B, and so on. So I think what we need to do for our industry is to find similar evolutions for the built environment. And we can only do this by shifting our mindsets. So we need to find new ways to look at our built environment other than passive structures. And we need to ideate what else can they become in the future. Um, for example, can they talk with each other? What should they share to make our lives easier, better? Today, we have all the technology to transform the built environment to cyber-physical systems. For example, smart cities concept can be seen as one step towards this direction, but surely it is not the final destination. So we need to do our homework and understand what the future is promising. That's interesting. So in alignment with what you said about shifting mindsets, do you see that cyber physical systems are causing that shift in mindsets and transdisciplinary ways of working? I hope that they are pushing us towards that direction. Um, because, you know, as I mentioned before, we need to shift our mindset. That's one, one thing for sure. And we can do this in a long term by, achieve, by developing transdisciplinary programs. We can educate engineers, developers, workers, scientists of the future to become more transdisciplinary. This is a long-term solution. But at the same time, we need to employ different mindsets and allow different thinking models to flourish. I personally benefit from three of these approaches, um, systems mindset, design mindset, and futuristic mindset. Could you, sorry, to, could you just elaborate on those three mindsets, actually, for somebody who might not be familiar with mm -hmm. what they are? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, I said systems thinking because today's world is interconnected. Everything has the potential to affect everything. Uh, we should move from this disconnection to interconnection, from linear thinking to circular thinking, from silos to emergence, um, from parts to holes, from analysis to synthesis. So these all are part of systems thinking. We do not focus on one component, one element, but we try to see the whole system and how they interrelate these components, how they interrelate with each other. Um, design thinking, I said, because we should design for people with people. While some of us always will work on providing solutions, some of us should work on understanding the needs and problems without being limited with technologies. And this can only be possible by talking with people, understanding what they need. And sometimes we see technology-driven solutions lose this, this very important part. Um, and the futuristic thinking or futuristic mindset, basically for the reasons that we have talked before. We will always have these unknown unknowns. But imagining different futures can maybe help us to be prepared with different future scenarios. Does it make sense? I think that's a good uh, brief introduction for those that may not be familiar with these mindsets and ways of thinking. So based on your previous research work, which has been really exciting and forward thinking on 
data and cyber physical systems. Would you mind telling our listeners a little bit more about what you're working on next in this domain and where our listeners can find more details about your own research work in that area? Well, I continue to work on understanding the data maturity of the industry. I work on this system of systems design thinking perspectives for specifically smart infrastructure. And I try to suggest ways to identify key performance indicators, stakeholders, and data models to assess interoperability, sustainability, and complexity. Um, I write a lot or at least I try to write as much as possible. So one can easily reach my work through Google Scholar profile of mine. One of my latest articles will be available soon and it is on future research and uh, education environment for cyber physical systems. I also, uh, I'm also very lucky to work together with wonderful researchers like yourself on a project that we imagine features for the built environment. Uh, we are 10 who are writing an article now and we are focusing on building several scenarios for 2040. I think people should certainly follow us to see the results of that project. Mm, I also have a personal website didemgürdür.com. Uh, I write about anything and everything really there. It's more like a reflective writing project of mine, to be honest. So many times in my life, I thought that I was completely alone with what I have been experiencing and then realized that there were many other people who had similar difficulties. So I take this as a payback and try to share my stories with the world. That's great. Thank you for that. So, and finally, for those of us who might be aspiring researchers in the field or maybe even working in the industry, what advice would you give to them when choosing to make an impact in our industry or trying to shift or change things within mm -hmm. our sector? Um, I think one of the most important things that we all can do is to change the current worldview of ours. Um, the three mindsets, system thinking, design thinking, and future studies or futuristic mindset, uh, I think should, it should, they should be on the agenda of all of us. Um, I can say that it is not an easy change. One should really observe themselves, constantly work on their decisions and how they really process how is how they are thinking models are and so on. But I promise that it will be a life-changing exercise shifting our mindsets. And this is, I think, the most important and impactful thing that we can all do. Thank you, Didem. Uh, this is an extra question as well. So mm -hmm. based on your, your website as well, you are an avid reader and, and an enthusiast for reading books. So based on some of the things that you've talked about within the shifting of mindsets, do you have any uh, book recommendations just off the top of your head for anybody that's interested in some of these topics that you've talked about? Well, there, there are actually lots of books that uh, it, for different um, topics, uh, one of the, I think, the ones that I love the most is uh, called Shaping the Future of Fourth Industrial Revolution. Um, Klaus Schwab is the writer of it. I, I think it is a must read uh, for anyone who is working in any industry because the fourth industrial revolution is here, it's happening, and it is wonderful to see how it can affect our future. Um, I think that is the first one that comes to my mind. Thank you for tuning in to listen to Beyond BIM podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more from our latest episodes, then you can visit Beyond BIM, which is available on SoundCloud and iTunes and all the other major podcast providers.